All right, Tony, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your history. Some people may be new to uh, catch wrestling, might not know that much about you. Well, I started off as a child. Uh, seriously, I was born in Cleveland, born and raised in Cleveland. Um, was raised by my maternal grandparents. And uh, unfortunately, we were in a very, very bad part of Cleveland, a very inner city ghetto uh, situation. It wasn't a, you know, Brady Bunch kind of atmosphere. It was, it was rough, a lot of violence, and, uh, you know, not just for like our family, but everybody in the neighborhood. And from a very young age, you know, I was, uh, you know, victimized or knew people who were victimized, constantly afraid, so on. My grandfather had boxed, you know, when he was younger, and um, of course he was elderly when he raised me, he was in ill health, but he was a stubborn old Italian, didn't want to leave the neighborhood, and of course financially they were burdened in, that, in, in, in the house he had, so there was no way of leaving the neighborhood, although every, every year I heard the story, yeah, next year, or when you graduate grade school, or when you graduate high school. Um, but he actually started to teach me the basics of boxing. Now, the funny thing is, this is in the early 70s. And, you know, I had already been exposed to martial arts through magazines or whatever. And I just wanted to learn Kung Fu. Because, you know, if you remember the David Carradine... Right, now that was the thing to do back then, wasn't it? Oh, it was like, I want to learn Kung Fu. I mean, it wasn't even Bruce Lee. I mean, I hadn't even seen a Bruce Lee movie. You know, we didn't go to movies in my family, you know, I mean, it was, you know, these were Depression era, World War II vet, uh, you know, movies are a luxury and so on, and we were really, really poor. I mean, it just, it was not just us, it was everybody in the neighborhood, so nobody went to movies. Um, it was very, very rare. Uh, I do remember, though, the first uh, martial art movie that I ever saw in the theater was called The Godfathers or The Godfather of Hong Kong. I remember that. And then, of course, I went and saw Rocky later. That was 76 or something. But no, I, uh, I got into boxing. And um, I didn't realize, you know, just what I was learning at the time because, again, to me, it wasn't martial arts, you know? Right, it was just some sport that, you know... You it was a sport, and not only a sport, it was a sport that your grandfather taught you. You know, and, you, you know, a lot of kids, you know, parents joke that, you know, uh, the kids don't respect us until they become parents. Well, imagine grandparents. Now, that's even another generation removed. But the funny thing is, all of my grandfather's friends that I met, they all boxed. Um, some professionally, others just, they boxed. Because when you think about it, back in those days, when they were kids, the, the only major sports there were really was boxing and baseball, okay? The NFL wasn't around, NBA wasn't around, I don't know about hockey, um, and the only other sport, if you want to call it that, it really wasn't, was professional wrestling, okay? So it seemed like everybody had a working knowledge of boxing. My grandfather took it to a high level, others that he knew that I ended up meeting through the years, pros, um, you know, took it to a high level. But because of the violence in the neighborhood, you know, I always wanted to learn to defend myself. And through the years, I happened to meet a couple of my friends' parents who, who may have known a few things here or there um, and taught me some tricks. But uh, I didn't start studying catch wrestling until I was 13, which was in 1977. And how did you come upon that? I mean, you know, you didn't take up an ad in the newspaper. <laughs> it, there wasn't any internet to find these sort of things. Sure there was. The internet was always there. Don't you know? Internet, cell phones, and answer machines, and color TVs. Um, there was a man named Rod Vaughn, King of Steel and Iron, who actually was, an, was from my neighborhood long before I was born. And when the neighborhood changed, again, before I was born, he moved out. But he used to go to my church. And I remember him, well actually he knew my, he knew my family and my mother before I was even born. Um, but I only knew him as a strong man growing up. And it was kind of funny because my grandfather, when he was young, there was a strong man, a Croatian I believe he was, or a Serbo-Croatian, named Peter Zevich, 
They used to come through my grandfather's neighborhood in Cleveland with the handlebar mustache and selling snake oil, horse-drawn carriage, and he'd bend the horseshoes and steal and all that. So there's, there was always a rivalry of who was stronger, Radvan or Zevich? Well, since I, Peter Zevich, was gone long before I was born, Stanley Radvan used to go to my church. And believe it or not, I was an, an altar boy. So I used to see him every Sunday when I would serve high mass, 10.30 mass. That would alternate. One week was um, 8, 8.30 mass, then the next week would be 10.30, the next week would be 12 o'clock mass, and you'd go in cycles until years go by, went down the line and I was stuck serving every mass. Um, so I used to see him in church and um, every two or three weeks. Not understanding that he wrestled, not even caring, I mean, if he would have told me then that he wrestled, it wouldn't have impressed me. Because when he ultimately did tell me he wrestled, it didn't impress me. Okay? Um, so, to get directly to your uh, question, to answer it, we had a church picnic. And of course, here comes Rodman walking with his limp and his cauliflower ear. And he was a well-known person in that in, where he lived in the neighborhood. He was Polish. Now, he went by Radvan. I mean, you know, so when I call him Radvan, it's not a sign of disrespect. That's what he went by. Radvan, king of steel and iron. Um, and I guess years ago they called him the Atomic Man. And I was really blown away by his strength. You know, he could bend coins. He could, you know, with his fingers, he could do things that were just freaky. So I was always, you know, a little afraid of this guy. So one day he comes up. I'm selling. I'm by the stage. And I'm selling pop and potato chips along with one of my friends. So he comes up and he shakes my hand and immediately I drop to my knees. I mean, I go straight down because his grip was like, to this day, I've never felt anybody that had a grip like that. Now, mind you, I'm not comparing it to when I was 13. I'm comparing it to when I was an adult the last time I shook his hand. And I have a fairly large size hand. To this day, no one has even remotely come close to the grip he possessed. Long story short, he had heard that I boxed and he had heard that I was doing some martial arts or so on and he goes, you should learn how to rest. So I say to him, very nicely, because you know, back in those days, kids were seen but not heard. I says, uh, you know, it was very, very nice and I said, well, Mr. Radhan, thank you, but no, I'm, I'm interested in learning how to fight. <laughs> okay. So he says, come here, come here. We had rooms off the side of the gymnasium where we were at. And he goes, come here, I want to see something. Well, in those days, whatever an adult said, you do. Now, mind you, I was 13, he was around 70. So this guy was, you know, really an adult. Okay, I go in the other room, and he goes to me, he says, kick me. No, I don't want to kick this guy. He goes, no, come on, you, you kick. So my buddy was with me, he's like, standing next to me, and he's like, you gotta do it, go ahead. Okay, so I deliver a roundhouse kick. Well, he instantly grabs it and puts it in the stopper toe hold, and I'm screaming before I hit the ground. <laughs> I get back up, I'm like, wow, what was that, man, I wanna learn that. He goes, nah, you don't want to learn wrestling, you want to learn how to fight. So he was busting my chops from the get-go. But, I mean, I was, just mesmerized by it, and I asked him. I asked him nicely, "Please, can you teach me?" So he told me, "You eventually come." He said, "Come to my house, and I'll show you a few things." You know, and um, that's how it started. And you know, my training isn't like the guys today who tell you what they want to learn. It, 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 it didn't go like that. You know, um, I had to do calisthenics, and I was really a malnourished child. I was real thin and skinny and underweight and all that and brittle. And I had bronchitis real bad. I used to mi miss school. I had rheumatic fever, you know, just, I had a lot of health issues. <clears throat> he wanted to get me strong, and so he had me doing a lot of calisthenics, a lot of exercises um, to get me prepared, you know, for uh, what my body and my mind would have to go through.